Awesome. Mike's Daily Ooh, Podcast. It's been a busy morning so far. Yikes. You know, bicycling is great exercise. My name is Mike Matthews. Thank you for listening to Mike's Daily Podcast, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Uh, the last place on earth. I don't like the thing, though, where it goes up my butt. That kind of hurts. But, you know, you can get the nice big fat seats, which I did. I have a big fat seat for my bike. I just don't own a bike. I don't own a bike. Mike's Daily Podcast. What was that all about? I just don't know. But this is a great show today because it's Friday and we're happy. Mike's Daily Podcast. That it's the last day of the week. Hey, today we'll hear from... Bonita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster, duh. It's a great show where we talk about things going on this Friday. If you don't like that, that's okay, buddy. Yay. We have this thing not too far from me. Mike's Daily Podcast. In Podcaster Valley, we have horses. There are horses up on the hill. They are the nicest, nicest horses. Mike's. I would Daily love you all to meet them. Podcast. But the horses, yeah. it was an interesting situation because my lovely lady friend and I, we got, we w- went through this fence. You know, they keep the horses b- b- behind this fence. And we walk in there, and this one horse comes right up to us. It's just sort of like, you know, this big, huge creature just walks right up to you. And I have my dog with me, too. I have Basil the Boxer, who will bark for you in a moment. Look who walked in. Hi, Mark! It's Benita the Rodeo Queen! How are y'all doing? Here's my horse, Nelly. Okay, I don't believe you. Yeah, she's right here. She's shy, though. Oh. She's not saying anything. Yeah! That's weird. Try it again. Here's my horse, Nelly. Oh, that's the situation. Okay. Look who else walked in. <laughs> the horse, Nelly, walked in. Huh? What? Confused? Maybe. Look who else is here. What was that all about? Hello, Mark. It's a disgruntled field player. Tell you what. What? This show is a little bit off today. I'm a little bit off. Whatever. You know what? Last weekend was so great. This weekend will suck in comparison. Actually, no. I'm going to see... A haunted house tonight. It's in Pleasanton. It's called the Pirates of Emerson. And here's today's podcast picture. I've been doing the commercial. Hometown Radio is brought to you by Pirates of Emerson. For five years now. And I still don't know why it's called the Pirates of Emerson. There are pirates there. But what's Emerson? (coughs) Basil. Oh, he loves horses. So these big horses are wild horses are on the side. Uh, they're in their pen on Redwood Road. Uh, they have this huge field. They have the whole mountain to walk up and down and eat. But if a human walks in through the gate, they love to walk up and say hi. Horse walks into a bar and says hi. And the bartender says long face joke. And then the horse. So this one horse has a little star on his forehead. Little white star. So we call him Estrella. The Spanish word, the four star. And this wonderful horse lets us pet him. He's so cool. Then all of a sudden, this big, like, darker horse comes up. And he looks a little more ferocious. And he comes over. And he, I had to, he's like walking right towards me. And I had to go, whoa. And the horse actually listens. So that's good. They're, they're tamed. They're trained. Whoa. whoa. And he's seen more. Aggressive, and the, uh, the 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 star horse actually fought with him. There was like a little horse fight going on. Luckily, we had gotten out of that. We were out of their range at that point. But they were the the star horse was yelling at the aggressive horse, was kind of going Meh! and pushing his his head against them. And the other one backed down. The uh, the the mean horse, the dark horse, walked away. My love is riding on this dark horse, baby. That was a little song for you, a little interlude on the show. And I hope you enjoyed it. Now, I discuss things like how this show is a little bit off today and the podcast picture. Oh, we haven't gotten to that. First, though, Facebook is telling me 
that there are three things, three notifications. Ooh, what could they be? Oh, I have memories. I have to add a business phone number to my website. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. Nobody gives a crap. And then uh, there's, uh, you know, because Facebook, who really goes on? Oh, but I did get a text from Sylvia, who is a listener of the show. And she reminded me that the Dia de los Muertos is coming up in Niles. Very, that, this is, I've been to the Fruit Vale Dia de los Muertos. And, well, let's just say I wasn't that impressed. It was too crowded. And you couldn't really see the altars. This, though, the Niles Altar Walk is happening November 3rd. It starts at 2 in the afternoon. El Camino de la Vida. The street of the of the life. Right? Uh, till 9 o'clock. It goes till 9 o'clock at night. And they last year had like a fire going and these cool traditional dances. And yeah, it was very nice. I had a show a year ago that I had posted called Rabbit. And I don't know why. It talks about the Heather Lind abuse story about George. D- oh, yeah. Remember? There were a couple ladies that came out and said that George H.W. Bush had like grabbed their butt. And I love how the, the once this is. Oh, flashback. Republicans didn't care about that. Just like they didn't care about uh, Christine Blasey Ford. Nope. They don't, whatever women have to say, we don't care. That's what they, they didn't give a crap. Oh, he's old. He's a distinguished president of the... You know, he only served one term. You don't have to build him up that big. He was Ronald Reagan's vice president. He had... He ran against Reagan and lost, basically. And then Reagan's like, Well, George, do you want to be my vice president? He had been in charge of the CIA. And there was some bizarre stuff going on around that back in the day. I don't know what... I mean, the CIA is... Full of secrecy and, But what do you think about Oh and then two years ago I had a show called Festoon Because I like to use big words Festoon That's that's like wearing right He festooned a cap That kind of thing And I had a picture Of these two red chairs That I saw In Huntsville, Alabama They got this place called The Flying Monkey And it's an old factory That they've, con- they've converted Into an artist space That sounds very Oakland Doesn't it? It is very Oakland. There's a couple of places like that in Oakland. But they got one place like that in Huntsville. And I used to love going there. Even though the art, I would never buy any art. But I just love taking the pictures. Is that not... Is that... That's hypocritical of me, isn't it? I like going to artist uh, lofts and co-ops and what have you. But do I buy anything? No, never. I'm like, no, this is all crap. But I support artists And artistry It's important My lovely lady friend Works for a charming young lady Who Does not like dogs And She met Basil uh, The other day And uh, her her, uh, her boss uh, This young lady And she not like, I mean, she was kind of, oh, what's he going to do? Oh, my God. I'm like, he's 10 years old. He's going to do nothing. All he's going to do is lick you to death. He loves people. So that was funny. But she she wants to get into pod, podcasting my lo- lovely lady friend's boss. And what she would do is a show about psychology. But it would be spoken in the, I don't know what they, what I apologize. What language do you speak in India? It's not Indian. I'm an ignorant American. But that, yeah, the language they speak there, she would do it in that language and do a podcast about that. And I said, let me know if you need help with that. I am helping my friend Katie do her podcast on Sunday. That's why there will be no Super Secret Sunday show. Just so you know. Like you cared But that's What's gonna happen Cause she's doing a podcast For her school That she works at And it's very cool Cause they interview Students And teachers And there's A, a non What do you call it It never ends That wellspring Of talent And content And, and the, I'm sure the families Love to Listen to that So That show is up 
Yesterday was a day from hell. Yesterday, ah, uh, da, 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 straight away into the night. I'll send a message in the bar. I'll send a message. Pray for the mercy of the sea. Ooh, stormy weather. Ooh, oh yeah. Ooh, waiting for love to rescue me. You know what's so funny is there is this thing on radio where you cannot sing on the air. If you're a DJ and you sing, you're fired. They throw you out because th- there is this thing that you... You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. That the belief system is that singing on the air turns off the listeners because, well, most DJs can't sing, as I just probably displayed to you. It feels so good, so good. That was a Van Halen, Sammy Hagar period song. And the, they thus believe, let the singers, the professional singers, the songs you're playing, let them do the singing. Don't do the singing yourself. Did I make it clear yesterday that Hugh Hewitt's voice is crap? And it's not be- now it's a little bit, of, it's a little bit better today. But yesterday when I heard it, he had like laryngitis or something and he was trying to do his show. And that's another thing. If you're a DJ, you're not supposed to do... If you're on the radio and you, your voice is messed up because of a cold, you stay off. You stay off till it's better. Now, my voice, when I have a cold, it gets really deep. And I sound much more enticing than I usually do. But then I'm also... I also sound t- tired. You, you heard how I sounded earlier this year when I had the laryngitis... No, what was it? The vocal uh, fry? The vocal fry. No, it was the thing... With the tonsillitis, yes. Oh, that was terrible. First time I ever had that. I hope that was the last. So, back to yesterday, though, in the world of radio. And don't sing on the air. Don't sing on the radio. But there was a a lady that I work with who said the following. She Okay, she sent me an email, and it was confusing. And I said to her, look... I didn't quite understand what you meant. It was confusing. Oh, no. I write, I wrote it right. You just can't read. And then she walked out. I got that. Can you believe that? What is that all about? Please tell me. What, is, what was that all about? How are there people in this world that are so confident and believe so, so strongly that their bleep doesn't stink. How are there the, these people on this earth? And they expect me to show a, an ounce of compassion or empathy for them? Even though I'm a good Christian and believe that Jesus said that you should love everyone as thy neighbor as you would love yourself because you love yourself. And when I think about you, I touch myself. Oh, when I'm... Um, and you, and you got to love yourself like this guy. He's a showboat. He's a grandstander. I'm really rich. Easy to do. That's a wonderful thing. And you should try it today. But here we go. I am wrapping up the show, I think, as we go outside a cafe anyway. We're bringing Mike Stilly podcast. I'm in podcast for Valley. I think that my point is I don't get that confidence. I was, I was in such a bad mood the rest of the day of the of the afternoon because uh, um, then somebody who was supposed to come in and do her show that I helped record she was 45 minutes late and then another person as I was trying to eat my lunch she comes in and so I'm eating chicken right she comes in and goes chicken 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 And I just found that really annoying because she says that every single time. And you know what? I don't like when people tell the same joke over and over again. Ha ha. It annoys the crap out of me when someone tells the same joke over and over and thinks that it's funny. And or, you know, just does the same thing over and over again. I know I start off every show with the same music and the Mike's Daily podcast thing. But that's cute, right? The point is, is don't, you know, so she said that and I went, yes. 
And then I, I didn't say a single word. I didn't try and st- start up a conversation. You forfeit that right when you tick me off. I was mad. I was, uh, I don't deal with that very well. But I go through that a lot. Oh, yeah, how much? A lot. The point is that the whole FBI thing now, FBI, F- it's been the year of FBI, can I tell you? FBI now trying to track down who delivered those packages. Even though conservative commentators don't even care that those pipe bombs were sent. They are saying things like, oh, well, there was anthrax sent to some Republicans last week and the media didn't say anything. Oh, well, liberals are whining because Trump didn't say specifically that it was targeting Democrats, but, you know, they're just whining. Oh, but the, you know what? Show a little compassion here. Destructive deadly weapons were sent to human beings that were all Democrat and fit the profile of people that Trump does not like and who calls out at his huge raucous basket of deplorable shows that he does where he talks and he says things like WikiLeaks I love WikiLeaks and the audience screams and Trump is using you people he's using you all you people that that sit there standing behind him so that the cameras show that there's a person that that there are people that support Trump you're you, you're waving your signs you're using him because you just want to get on TV but he's using you he's using you because he is getting you to cheer and is getting you to, to go woo and he's using you I guess it's a mutual use fest those things everyone's using everyone Kind of like something that rhymes with Borgy. But yeah, Trump, I feel that uh, the whole, well, the use, I don't like that. I, whenever I see those rallies, I just feel so sad for those idiots, those people that attend those. Oh, but their shows, Mike, it's like entertainment. But <laughs> the people that showed up to his last one where he was reading off of a teleprompter because he wanted to be firm and strict about the, this, uh, the bombs going out to people. And he, he was, re- and he goes, I'm being nice. Am I being nice? I'm being so nice right here. And people are like, yeah, wait, this isn't the Trump we want. We want the one that just yells out things like Mexicans are all rapists and that kind of fun stuff. Come on, Trump. Where are you? I won. I won. But Yes, he is so much fun at those rallies. I just feel like he uses them. So he uses the rallies. He uses the people. He basically says in the White House what they tell him to say. You know, we gotta, in order to make this country run properly, Mr. President, you have to do certain things. And he goes, all right, all right, I'll do that. And then... When he gets in the rally, that's where he, I think he maybe he, you know, just, he's so full of the endorphins and the love fest, the people that are showing him so much love, they love him so much that he just goes, ah, screw it. I'm back to being myself again. The United States. I'm just going to say whatever. What was that all about? I know the end of that little rant, but the fact is that this show might be a little off or might be a little on. I don't know. I don't even know what the podcast picture is today. All I know is the people after that Brett Kavanaugh hearing, low these months ago, they got the hell out of that chamber so fast, that Senate chamber that they were, it cleared out because I was watching it on C-SPAN. Within like five minutes, everyone was out. Except for, I think, the girl from uh, Who's the Boss. She was still in there hanging out going, yeah, I'll take a picture with you. I'll take a picture with you. The podcast picture today is of Basil the Boxer in some sort of situation. And I will tell you that uh, someone wrote a song called Jungle and they just sent me an email and they're called Hotel Myra. Okay. That's the kind of email I get. Oh, all right. Yes, we'll do a picture of Basil the Boxer from just a few days ago. At the Peninsula Park in San Leandro. 
And he had a great day running around and barking, and, and I got some pictures of him. So enjoy that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. Enjoy your weekend. The next show, it is going to be the wonderful Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. I guess we could have said hi to this other guy that was here today that I forgot about. Yeah, I poured the root beer for you right now. I hope you like it. Drink it now or I'll cut you. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Thank you, brewmaster. All right. Enjoy your weekend. And what we'll do next time is maybe something a little more organized. How about that? Nah, we'll just do. Why do women pull their hair back? Now, I don't mind it if you do like a little ponytail, but some women just pull that hair back like so tight. And they put like a, put it in a little bun, but they put it. I'm like, you got you're pulling your you're putting yourself in torture pulling it that tight. I don't get that. Women that I've met that have their hair pulled tight like that are a little bit tightly wound. It's weird. It's like a visual representation of their personality. Have you noticed this? Is this just me? Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm Jeff Foxworthy. You might be a redneck. The thing is. If you, if you hate your hair that much, just go bald like me. It's so much fun. That was just food for thought. Okay. God willing, we'll be back Monday. Enjoy your day. And, and be confident. And be strong. And believe in what you think. And believe in a, a good America. And believe in the future. And believe... Believe me, I'm done. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, hey, and that was FF episode 1733. 1733. Have a great weekend.